Now let's understand how do we implement commands in WPF. So if you recall, we already uh, had this EMP class in this current project. So EMP was there implementing iNotify property change and there were name, age and photo like properties that we have used. So keeping this EMP class as it is and what I want to do is employee needs to be shown into the UI. So for this purpose, what we can plan to do is in here, I'll add a new project one more time. Let's define a new item here, a new window in here. And then we can call it as window 13, let's say. So now what I need to do is in here, I'll have stack panel one more time. I need to take one text box. I need to have name equal to txt name, height, width. So this is one text box. And then I just need one button named as btn update. Some height, one more time, some width. And then we will just try to specify some content here that is update in here. Now, what is it that we need to do in the code behind? So we can very well go in code behind and specify, I need an employee class object. So emp1 equal to new employee. And we can simply mention this dot data context equal to emp1. If you recall earlier session, we use this data context property to set up some employees value. I just mentioned somebody's name is let's say ABC. Somebody's age is let's say 30. And then somebody's photo, which I'm not going to go and use anyway. And then we will set up this employee class object as a data context. Maybe what we can do is we can declare and define at different places. Initial set this to null. And as and when constructor gets created or called, we will initialize it over here. Now this employee one has got name property, which I need to bind with respect to UI. So I, I can just mention here, that is it should get the text and it should bind with the path, which is called as name. So it should look for name property in a data context. Text box doesn't know data context. So it will escalate a call to stack. It will escalate a call to window. And ultimately at a window level, it will find out the context called as EMP1, which is of type EMP, which holds name as in property. Okay, all good. This is something we already have done. But on a button update, I really want the latest data from the UI or latest data inside employee to be updated in database. So how do I manage this? So a couple of options we can have here. I'm ready to write down one more class here. So one more class I will write down, let's say a data access layer. And this data access layer class will simply have a method. Let's name this method as void update database. We don't have any database as of now, but we just need to see that how logic can be implemented. Imagine this method expects a parameter like EMP. And then we will have actual updation code over here. So actual update code. Right now we are writing this entire content in the same namespace and then ultimately in same file itself. Ideally, we should have put up this DAL file or DAL class into different file, maybe in different DLL, maybe in different folder. But then just for the sake of understanding, we are quickly going to go and have a class written over here itself. Now, what I really want to do on the button click, this button click, I would like to execute this DAL classes update DB method with latest EMP into it. How do I manage this? So what I'm going to do is now I need here this XAML file on a button click, I really need to call some code. So sometime back there was a command and then we mentioned here something called as copy. So I'm just going to mention here that is go bind yourself with the path called as let's say update command. Now obviously where exactly is going to be update command. Just like text of a text box had a property called as name. In similar manner, command will expect a property called as update command. So here, what does that mean is EMP as in class is expected to have this property of type, let's say maybe I command type property. And then if I need I command and then I need update command here, ultimately what I need is I need, I can't have, I can have property of type I command, but then I really need a implementation. 
So what I'm going to do before we proceed with this, I'm also going to write down one more class, which is going to be, let's say, maybe something called as uh, dial commands, I'll call it as, and this dial commands will implement something called as I command. Now I command interface in case of WPF comes from a namespace called as system.windows.input. So I'm going to have this, I'm going to implement this interface and there we are. We have two methods here can execute and actual execution. So can execute, you saw sometime back button was disabled when there was no text inside text box getting selected before copy. And paste was not even selected when there was nothing in the clipboard. So which means there is some logic just to check whether we can execute the code or not. Similar way, right now before we proceed, I'm just going to go and return here something called as true, which means yes, we can execute the logic at any moment. This is hard coded, but we will understand how do I change this value later on. But as of now, what lies in execute is we want execute to give a call to update DB. So how do I link these two? I want execute to call update DB as in code. So how do I mention this? So here is what we will do. Dal commands, this particular dal command type should be over here. So there is a property of type dal commands, which is called as update command. And what I'm going to do is in a constructor, I'm going to define this dot dal command or so called you can say dal command is equal to new dal command. And then I need to mention here to dal command that is please have execution of dal in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a delegate in this case. So I'm going to mention here object of dal. So let's say a dal object. And then I'll mention here new dal object. And I'll mention that this dal object should be passed as a parameter. What do I do with this? So this was update command. I'll mention here update command. Whenever EMP object is created, dal object will be created. Update command will be set to dal commands. And I'll expect a parameter of type dal object. But what will happen if I just send dal object over here? Does that mean here in a constructor, we can expect a parameter of type dal object? Shall I just make it dependent like this? Something like dal and dal object here. Yeah. And then obviously we can collect this parameter over here. Let's say a private dal object. Let's call it as dal object over here. Initially set up to null. And we can very well collect it over here as in maybe let's say dal object as in full world. And one can very well go and give a call out here like dal object dot. What was the method? Method was update to db. But this is like then for every button, I will have to keep on constructing classes like this. So where exactly is the code is not going to be update code is not going to be part of dal command. Update code can be there in the dal class itself. But we really don't want commands even to be made dependent on specific objects. So here is what we will plan to do. I just have an intention of calling update db here. So instead of we only calling update db directly, let us look at the signature of update db. Signature of update db tells you that it is returning void and it expects a parameter of type employee or it may not even expect anything. So in that case, what we can plan to do is I wish to call a delegate here. So I need a pointer. I need a delegate which basically can point to this method which returns void and expects EMP type. So in that case, what we can plan to do is we can always expect here a delegate of type action. Now action delegate can point to a method in .NET which returns void and it can expect some parameters. So one, if I just start using action directly, it is pointing to a method taking no parameter. But I really want action to take a action to point to a method which takes parameter, which is in this case EMP type parameter. Let's call this as pointer. Initially, we can just set it to null. And then same action pointer is something we can expect as a parameter here. So we are not going to have a dependency on action. We will just mention this dot pointer should be pointing to whatever you, you know, or should be set up to whatever you pass on here. And then here we should simply call pointer and we can just expect the EMP class object. Now, how do I pass on the EMP class object in this case? So we are interested in collecting the data in here. So right now I have interest of calling some sort of method. 
we can always expect the parameter of type EMP as a second parameter out here in case we are interested or whatever EMP like since you mentioned a method name itself so that method is something we can keep on calling so if I just call here rather let me do one thing let me have here no parameter passed because that way I'll make it dependent on EMP so I'm just going to remove it and I'll call pointer in this case we can very well pass on the command argument and then we can expect that parameter out here but then we will just keep it simple as simple as of now maybe in update db or so I'm just going to go and remove the parameter for a while we you will get to know why I'm doing this because in dial later on we can just have update db collecting the EMP automatically how we will see because these two things we can very well get into one single class itself the EMP and the EMP DAL like functionality but that will be in the later part whenever we will work with MVVM so as of now what we have done is we have DAL command taking a pointer and that pointer is basically getting called in execute so this is the method which will be executed on button click and then WB of runtime will get to know that button click will execute execute button click will need a pointer and we would have passed a pointer to a method which is part of dial class okay how do we mention this how do we use this here we go and we will just mention EMP is acting as a source there is something called as dial commands acting as just like name is a, a getter setter update command dial command is also a getter setter now rather I should have dial command acting as a getter setter so maybe what I'll do is I'll mention this as underscore update command and I will simply have a property constructed here so we just have property constructed just now update command will be set up to new dial command but then as we discussed earlier new dial command expects an action parameter so I have an interest of specifying whenever dial command is created tell dial command that is I want dial object to give a call to update db that's it and then now if you notice I'll just mention button update please look at the sequence whenever a button update gets called I mention command to couple with update command whenever we run this project we have mentioned text boxes text to be bound with name so name as a get resetter and update command as a get resetter needs to come from same source and right now the source is specified in the code behind that is here who is acting as a source right now that is EMP1 which is object of EMP now while EMP was created I created name property value I set up age property value but did I set up command value observe it in EMP what I did was if I just go to definition in EMP constructor I have also set up update command and I mentioned to update command which is of type I command meanwhile internally you can see this dial command which is of type i command so here I mention in this code that is update command needs to know which method to call so I just mentioned a delegate here instead of mentioning like this easiest way is new action I need and which expects a parameter of type dial object dot update db so I am passing one pointer to dial commands which is bound with update command so whenever button gets clicked update command will be called in turn we will convey that take this pointer which is pointing to update db and by default in WPF runtime what will be called is a method called as execute since it is implementation of i command so execute will be called and execute internally will look for a parameter of type action pointer to be called and since pointer is pointing to update db you will see this method will be called then so let me see whether it works now so I'm going to run this project. And then rather I haven't set up here window 13 as a startup. So I'm going to go to app.xaml and I'm going to set up here window 13 as a startup. Let's see what happens now. So if I click on update method now, see it goes to this what button knows is it has to go to update command which was here go to update command update command is of type dial command 
So what it does is, since update command is of type dal command, it goes to dal command class and tries to find out what to do is implementation of i command exists. So it goes, checks whether we can execute this code, it is said to be true. So yes, we can execute the code. Which code we are supposed to execute? WPF runtime will automatically give a call to execute method. What execute method internally does is gives a call to a pointer, which ourselves we have put up to it to point to some method. So see to it, pointer is pointing to update db. Because when we created update command object, that time only we had it conveyed that please take this pointer pointing to update db. So now what will happen here is if I just press F11, it is going to give a call to pointer. And if I press F11 again, you will find out it actually jumps to update db function. So if you look at the code content now, in XAML.cs, I just have object created and set up object as a data context. But then actual logic of a button click is part of some other class completely. That is part of dal class. So and then with respect to XAML.cs, there is no button click code written as such. It's completely in separate file. So this separation of concern is achieved with the help of I command concept. So we will see this thoroughly by literally layering these uh, facts, these classes in the next MVVM demonstration. Till then I have made uh, my I command concept hopefully clear.